Okay, so a friend of mine, he asks, he says, I'm confused by what you're saying. Uh, what am I missing? And then he quotes Revelation 20, verse 4. All right, I'm going to make this real quick. All right, let me read it first. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received this mark upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So the, the very first thing you have to get over is this idea of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. It's not there. Okay? It's not there. It wasn't there yesterday. It's not going to be there tomorrow. It's not there right now as I'm showing it to you, just in case. Revelation 20. Revelation 20, King James Bible. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It's not there. It does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. If it did, it would contradict the entire Bible. It would be a problem. It would be a huge problem. It does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It doesn't say it. No matter how many times you read it, it'll never say it. And if I talk about this tomorrow, it's still not going to say it. And I think that's the one hurdle people have to get over before their eyes can be opened. Okay, I, I almost feel like I should quit right there. Once you get over that fact, it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years, then the rest of this should open up for you. Okay? And I, I feel like that's the hurdle people are having trouble getting over. You know, it's kind of like people have trouble getting over the fact that we've never been to the moon. It's because of a worldview. The same thing applies with, with this verse here, with chapter 20, Revelation 20. Okay? People's worldview affects what they're reading and what they're seeing. Alright, and what I want to do is uh, open people's eyes and strengthen their faith in the Word of God in the Bible that they hold in their hands. Alright? So I want to show this verse here. Now look at it. What's it say? They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It's talking about those of us that are saved. Alright, so you don't agree with that? Okay. You have to admit that it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. You have to get over that. And then you have to define who they are. Okay. But I'm telling you, until you accept the fact that it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years, the rest of it doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, in what in what I, my research, everybody says Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. The Bible never says it. Not a single time. Not in Revelation 20. Not anywhere at all in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is very clear. Jesus Christ reigns forever. All right. So I want to keep this as simple as possible. I just want whoever to look and think about this. All right, we also see this thousand years mentioned in verse 6. And if you notice, it also does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It's not there in verse 6 either. But because I was asked of verse 4, I feel it important that we don't lose sight of what verse 4 says and what verse 4 does not say. And it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. 
not Jesus Christ, but they. Now you have to define who they are, and I'm going to tell you they are those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. And I'll show you, explain that to you real quick, but I'm telling you, you first have to get over the fact that it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. That's number one. Until you get to that point, man, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to see it. Because you're looking at the same thing I'm looking at and you're seeing something totally different that is actually not even there. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection okay so what is that yeah. <laughs> is it you being resurrected the first time and then you're gonna be resurrected again the second time and then you're gonna be resurrected again a third time no no somebody might be teaching that but you are not the first resurrection I'm not the first resurrection Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. He even calls himself the resurrection. He is the resurrection. He is the one that laid down his life for us. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is the resurrection. All right, and then blessed and holy are we that have part in his resurrection because we are born of God. We have God abiding in us and we abide in him and we have everlasting life on such the second death has no power. The second death has no power over us right now. The second death is the judgment of God against those who are not saved. And right now, we are priests of God and of Christ. And right now, we reign with Christ during this time period right now therefore if this is speaking of us in verse 6 it's also speaking of us in verse 4 alright just because there's a special mention of people being beheaded this is all this is doing is telling us the kind of world that we're living in right now all right, and then when this world comes to an end and Satan is loosed, why is he loosed? To gather together the unsaved at our feet. All right, we just read about that in Genesis 3 where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, so this is God talking to the serpent and saying that it, which is Christ, shall bruise his head and the serpent's head shall bruise his heel. All right, this is why I show this stuff so that somebody might be able to see it. This is all throughout the Bible. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Alright, so when the devil or Satan is gathering together the unsaved, they are gathering them at our feet. And they will, it says here, And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, this is when we are in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ and fire comes down from God 
out of heaven and devours them all. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, we can go to Revelation 3 real quick. I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. God is going to use Satan to gather together the unsaved at our feet. They will be at our feet and there will be no doubt that we are saved and they are not. Okay? And it's going to seem a lot harder to them than it is us. But God is just. Alright? So this is all this is talking about. All we have to do is connect the dots and understand this, that there is only one marriage between Christ and his bride. All right, there's not multiple marriages. There's one marriage. And that happens when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, so we can go to Matthew 24. And we notice here it says, When the sun is dark and the moon shall not give her light, and stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and all the earth will mourn. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Notice that a great sound of the trumpet indicates the end of the world. And he gathers together his elect. All right, and so we can go to uh, uh, let's go to First Corinthians 15 first, real quickly. And notice here it says, "In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump." Did you notice that? Here in verse 31, it says, "With a great sound of a trumpet." So also in First Corinthians 15 at the last trump this is the end of the world for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed we will go from mortal to immortality to being immortal all right and then of course let's go to first Thessalonians 4 and we'll notice the same thing here for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout all right this parallels what we read here with the great sound of a trumpet, with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, signifying the end of the world. And of course, just in case you weren't familiar, this is when Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. All right, this is the end of the world. All right, first. Thessalonians 4 and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord okay so when we are in the air with the Lord then our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all right so this is consistent all throughout the Bible now we go to verse 11 here where it talks about a great white throne and him that sat upon it that's Jesus Christ alright and the judgment of God is are you saved or are you not saved do you have sin or do you not have sin the only way to not have sin is if you are born of the Spirit of God and that comes by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ okay the only way to be saved is if you put your trust in his finished work not in your own works okay now to me this seems pretty simple because I, I go over it and I go over it but I have to go back to verse 4 
and show and sort of hammer this point home it does not say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years it doesn't say it in verse 6 either it's not in Revelation 20 it's not anywhere in the Bible and once we establish that then we you know then we can nullify anybody or dismiss anybody that teaches Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years it's not here it's not anywhere these people that teach it are deceivers they are not people that know the truth and intentionally deceive they themselves have been deceived All right, and the world is full of deceivers now isn't this interesting when Jesus talks about the end of the world he is you know he's talking about it because he's asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world well what's the first thing Jesus says huh take heed that no man deceive you the very first thing he says take heed that no man deceive you many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many now that's a lot that's not a few that's not some that's a whole bunch a whole bunch of people are going to be deceived at the end toward the end of the world and this is evidenced all throughout the Bible even in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 but I want to share a verse here with you I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on earth why would that question be asked except that the whole world is being deceived and this is one example and I'll tell you why this is so terrible and abomination and, and just pure evil that people are teaching that Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years number one it suggests that Jesus Christ doesn't reign forever all right if he doesn't reign forever what happens when he stops reigning all right that's that's bad enough but what you're doing is you're teaching unsaved people that they can wait wait until this time period comes just like you see in the Hollywood movies when there are people raptured up you can still be saved you'll get another chance and I've talked to people that believe that because they heard it from somebody that's and it's not the gospel I'm telling you right now when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world there are no more second chances to be saved that's why it's so important that people they should not be teaching this at all because it's not it's it's not the truth Jesus Christ does not reign a thousand years he reigns forever all right this is very important very important you're giving false hope to the unsaved when you should be teaching them the true hope of Jesus Christ that he will deliver us from this wicked world right just as Moses led his people out of Egypt out of the wickedness of Egypt so also will God lead us out of this wicked world through our Lord Jesus Christ okay all right so again I just wanna I don't know if I mentioned this earlier but in Revelation 20 verse 4 it makes no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years it's not there okay